Many people already know that 120 over 80 is the normal range for blood pressure. But is 120 over 80 still considered normal in your 20s versus your 50s, 60s, and 70s? As we age, our blood vessels lose their elasticity and become stiff. Think of it like comparing a brand new road for someone in their 20s to a worn and torn road for someone in their 40s and older. So imagine we are delivering a gift to loved one, traveling at the same speed as a 120 over 80 on the smooth, newly made road versus the old, heavily used road. Can we get there and make a clean delivery in the same amount of time? Here, the blood vessel represents the road and the delivery truck is the blood. Let's say it takes about 30 seconds to make a full circulation of the blood in your 20s, and 120 over 80 is doing a great job. But let's say in your 60s, with the same power of 120 over 80, it takes about one minute to make a full circulation. It's like taking twice as long to deliver. Then, can we say our body cells are happy and normal? Because as the vessels become stiff, our body needs to increase its power to make the proper delivery of the blood. Take a look at this table. As you can see, every year, the number of a patient increases. It doesn't make sense if the parameter haven't changed. But because the guideline have been changed slightly, um, this number is possible. If there are any other disease that show this type of a graph, please let me know in the comments. Because with this result, without changing a parameter, it means that whole Korean population is doing something wrong in managing their health. Let me share this table too. There's a thing called JNC, where the committee meets and decide the treatment guideline for high blood pressure. This committee has decided the protocols for hypertension throughout the years from JNC1 through JNC8. As you can see, compared to JNC1 through 3, to JNC 5 through 7, the number of a patient eligible for treatment jumps more than 11 times. This means 11 times more patients now require treatment for high blood pressure. With this guideline, who is the most beneficial? Is it the patient or is it the big <laughs> company? And now I'm going to stop right here. When you have a high blood pressure, most patients only monitor two numbers the higher number and the lower number, but there is something called pulse pressure, and it will be very beneficial if you monitor this number too. You can assume two conditions with this pulse pressure. The first one is how flexible or elastic our vessels are, and the second one is how well our heart is pumping blood. Checking the pulse pressure is simple. You basically subtract the smaller number from the large number. So if your blood pressure is 120 over 80, it's 120 minus 80, which is a 40, and this 40 is your pulse pressure. The normal range of this number is between 40 and 60. So whenever you check your blood pressure, make sure to subtract and remember this number as well. If the number is a higher than 60, the risk of heart condition increases, and here's how. When we measure blood pressure, we have two numbers, systolic and diastolic. Systolic show a pressure of your heart contraction and diastolic show when the heart releases it when our heart contracts that's the when the heart sends the blood out to your body and then when the heart relaxes that's the when circulated blood fills the heart because the heart is also made of the tissues and cell it also need to get oxygen and nutrients from the blood and this crown like um, blood vessel is called coronary artery and these vessels give blood to the heart. But when this coronary artery gets narrow or clogged up, it could cause muscle necrosis and heart issues, such as uh, angina and myocardial infarction, commonly known as a heart attack. Because of that, we also need to care for the diastolic number, although we tend to care more for the higher number. If this lower number, the diastolic number, is low and pulse pressure becomes higher, it means that the time between each heart contraction is getting longer, indicating the inadequate blood supply to the heart. As we age, our blood vessel age too, especially from our 40s onward. 
Of course, this aging process varies for each individual. We all see people who look younger than their age. Some say you could compare it uh, with the aging of your skin to blood vessels. Of course, we can all afford to spend like Hollywood stars, but we should at least try to maintain our bodies before they become damaged. So just like you should care for your skin, you should also care for your blood vessels. Anyways, an increasing pulse pressure number equals a loss of elasticity in the blood vessels. Check out this study. They tracked 11,000 men aged 60 and older, and their pulse pressure become higher than 55, the chance of heart disease increased by 40%. This study also shows that for every 20-point increment in pulse pressure, there is a 26% increase in the risk of AF. Another study from JAMA shows that if the pulse pressure is higher than 67, there is a 55% increased risk of a heart failure. And there's another study about increasing risk of a stroke. Every 10 points increase in pulse pressure increase the risk of stroke by 11 points. These studies also show a correlation between pulse pressure and erectile dysfunction. So what are the causes of higher pulse pressure? As mentioned earlier, we can suspect the condition of vascular elasticity. The main reason would be arteriosclerosis. As vessel condition decreases and lose elasticity, they become more stiff, leading to an increase in pulse pressure. Another scenario would be hyperthyroidism. When our thyroid overworks, higher pulse pressure can be observed. Additionally, higher pulse pressure can be seen in cases of a severe anemia. And when pulse pressure is higher than 60, half of men tend to show low testosterone levels. Prevention is the best medicine. When overall blood pressure is high, pulse pressure tend to be high as well. So we need to lower overall blood pressure, right? The best medicine for a high blood pressure patient is exercise. Exercise is not only the best way to prevent hypertension, but it also helps reduce pulse pressure. High intensity interval training and isometric exercise are very beneficial. But if you're not ready for this type of exercise, regular cardio is definitely better than doing nothing. Of course, quitting smoking and reducing alcohol consumption are also important. While casual drinking may be okay and even beneficial as it relaxes blood vessel and help with sleep, excessive alcohol consumption can lead to increased uh, pulse pressure. The last one is controversial omega-3. I have this very fun video an informative video about this topic, so please check it out. Anyways, as for the omega-3, a 1 to 1 ratio of EPA and DHA taking a total of 6 grams of omega-3 for 16 weeks showed not only a decrease in pulse pressure but also reduced arterial stiffness. If you don't trust supplement, then increasing fish consumption can be a good alternative. There are many more ways to use supplement like vitamin B9, uh, vitamin K, garlic extract, but I will make a separate video about how to control hypertension because I don't want you to get bored and leave. Also, there's something called narrow pulse pressure, which is when your pulse pressure is lower than 40. This narrow pulse pressure could be caused by chronic heart failure, uh, aortic stenosis, or blood loss. So when you check your blood pressure, please do simple math to assess your heart and blood vessel. I hope this video was helpful and if you know someone who has a high blood pressure, please share this video with them. Also, as we are reaching 8,000 subscribers, I thank you so much for the support and health as well, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. See you next time.